Right, fifth years, let's have a go at this. And I appreciate it's not perfect. The screen is leaning. The focus is a bit dodgy. But it's not a perfect world and this is the best I can do at the moment. Now, let's look at the question. Question 2, leaving cert 2012, 8 years ago. The experiment is about the focal length of a converging lens. I underline that because some people confuse it with a concave mirror. And it gives us four sets of data. That means we have to use those four sets of data in calculations. And there's four parts to the question. And the first part is describe with the aid of a label diagram how the student obtained the data. 15 marks. So you'll be expected to give a label diagram but also expected to explain how the student got the data. What is the data? Well, it's U, which is the object distance, and V, which is the image distance. So, a label diagram and some way of saying how the student got both of these guys. Okay, let's look at one student's work here. Now, here we have one student's work. I really hope you can see this. I know it's a little bit dodgy. Let's go through this student's diagram. Well, he's got the object. That's good. He's got the converging lens labeled, and it's a correct converging lens. That's good. He's got a white screen. Now, I really, really am a big fan of saying, putting plenty of information into the diagram. So, say, clear, sharp, image on a white screen. Okay. The student also has a meter stick. Now let's see what else the student has. Well, they've got you, and it's a good practice to put object distance above you and image distance above V. But let's see exactly what this student is showing us the object distance to be. From there, Probably best if you put it to the center of the, the object and it's stopping there. But you should measure all distances to the center of the lens so that arrow should be coming over to the center of the lens. The image distance isn't measured from that point there. The image distance is also measured from the center of the, the lens. And it goes all the way to the white screen. These are actually important things that can save you marks later on. Okay, what else? That diagram now would get nine marks out of nine. Probably would have got away with that in this part, but it's good to put it in. Now, what else did the student say? Move the screen. That's good. Until a clear, sharp image of object is obtained. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Measure U and V. Perfect. But it's always correct to say what instrument. With a meter stick. Okay. So move the screen, clear sharp image. Three marks. Measure U and V. Another three marks. Not mentioned in the meter stick. Zero out of three marks. But hold it! They're not that bad in leaving cert marking. They will look up there and say, yeah, the student has a meter stick. So we will give him the three marks. That's why it's so important to have a perfectly well-labeled diagram with as much information as possible in it. What have you learned from this? No hanging arrows. The labels must go right to the center of the converging lens. Okay, let's now look at the next part of the question. Okay, why is it difficult to measure the image distance accurately? Well, it's really asking for any, any way that you can improve measuring the image distance. Now, this will go up on office, but I'm just saying any two of these. One way of measuring the image distance accurately is measure all distance to the center of the lens. Another way of measuring it more accurately is making sure there's no zero error on the meter stick. Making sure there is no zero error on the meter stick. Then another way of making sure uh, of measuring the image distance better is making sure there's no error of parallax made by the student. 
So any of those three answers would have answered the part, why is it difficult to measure the image distance? It could be me difficult to measure the image distance because an error of parallax was made. It could be difficult to measure the image distance because there was a zero error on the meter stick. Or it could be difficult to measure the image distance because you have to measure to the center of the lens and that's sometimes hard to find. Okay, let's now look at the next part of the question. The next part of the question is using all of the data in the table, find the value for the focal length of the lens. 15 marks, three fives. Okay, let's go back to our first student, see what our first student did. Our first student, well, first of all, gave the formula. That's excellent. That formula is not in the maths tables. Well, actually, it is in the maths tables in this form. 1 over F equals 1 over U plus 1 over V. But that formula, that version of it, is quite difficult to use. That's the better version to use. This student has got three marks immediately for writing down the formula. Now, what did the student do? Well, the student took the first object distance, the first image distance, multiplied them, added them, and got an answer. But here's the problem, here's the problem. The student just used one set of data, got one answer. They didn't use this set, this set, or this set of data. This student only did it once. So they would have got three marks there, but would have lost nine. So they would have got a total of six out of 15. Lot of marks lost there. They did give a good answer with correct units, but a lot of marks lost there. Let's go to student number two. I really hope you can see this. Student number two. Now student number two here gave the correct formula. Three marks. Then they used the formula with the data. They used the first set of data, the second set, the third set, and the fourth set individually. So they did this once, twice, three times. They got four times there. They got four separate answers. Here is a little problem. What should they have done? They're now got uh, three marks there, another three marks for that, another three marks for any other one. Actually, they're now on 12 out of 15, but they got four answers. What should they have done with those four answers, you say? Well, what they should have done with those four answers, the first one was 10.1. And you say, why, why don't it go to more places of decimals? Well, the, the numbers we got were only to one place, so I'm, 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 it's valid to only go to one place of decimal. You can go to more like that guy, but that's okay. 9.9, uh, 10.2, and another 10.2. They were the four answers. What should they have done with those four answers? Well, they should have got an average. So adding those, 40.22914, and divide by four, you get 10.1. So the average focal length is 10.1. This student did very well, but didn't calculate the average. And of course, there's one thing left out here. Always put the appropriate units, centimeters there, centimeters. Okay, so that's the calculation. If you can't see this too well, remember I'm going to put my answers up on, actually I actually have just done it, up on the assignments folder in the files in Office 365. The last question, let's have a quick look at the last question. Why is it difficult to measure the image distance when the object distance is less than 10. Now we've just calculated a focal length of the lens of 10.1 centimeters. What happens if you put an object inside the focal point? Well, the best answer possible is this. If you put an object inside the focal point, the image is said to be virtual. And a virtual image cannot be obtained or found on a screen. So if you put an answer down, object is inside the focal point, you would have got the six marks there. If you said the object in this case was virtual, you would have got the six marks. Or if you did both, if the object is inside the focal point, the image is always virtual, virtual image. You can see with your eye, but you cannot get them on a screen. Okay, let's hope this video was a little bit of use to you. We'll see where we go next. Bye.